Naperville, Illinois, my hometown, the community, one of the top 10 towns in the United States to raise a family, some of the best schools in the country. Or is it? The heroin epidemic here is out of control. Let's go! Go! I'm fucking stunning myself! This is the insanity of where this disease is. I'm gonna fucking get it, I'm gonna start it myself. I'm gonna start it! I'm gonna find it! I'm gonna start it! I don't want you to fucking die. Kids got heroin in the house. Mom's gonna go flush it down the toilet. Mark my words, we will be standing at this kid's funeral. One out of every five kids is abusing heroin. We don't have an epidemic going on here. We have a fucking pandemic, and we're not doing anything about it because we're all in denial. 129 people a day nationwide succumb to an opiate overdose. But there's a big misconception of what an opiate addict is. Most people think the opiate addict is a person on the corner, a minority, the person with the brown paper bag or a needle in their arm. And that's a huge misconception because the average heroin addict today is a 22-year-old white middle-class female and a 23-year-old white middle-class male. From where? Communities like ours right here in our backyard. But we're still in denial about it. Where is all this starting? Take a look at this chart. At the top, it starts with prescription pain pills. But where are they purchasing the prescription pain pills? 4.4% from a drug dealer. 4.8% took them, 7.1% other source, so on. But get over to the left. You see that 55%? They get them from a family member or a friend. Everyone sitting in the audience right here is an accidental drug dealer. Every one of you. Why? Because you have prescription pain pills sitting in your cabinets at home that are unused. Or you have prescription pain pills sitting in your cabinet that should be disposed of, that aren't taken to the police station or the fire department and disposed of, or they're not kept in a lockbox. 75% of the people that are heroin addicts started with prescription pain pills. When we talk about heroin, if you see these little tinfoil bags laying around, people think it's a gum wrapper. No, that's what heroin comes in. That is one $10 bag of heroin. One $10 bag of heroin. What does heroin addiction do? Right here, it kills. Last year in DuPage County, we had 43 heroin overdose deaths. A good friend of mine, Adam Silvers, was number 43. We also had eight fentanyl deaths. This year alone, we've had 58 combined. Do you see the increase on what's happening here? Do you see what's going on in our communities? One death, one death is too many. See all these faces? These are all loved ones from our local community that have succumbed to heroin overdoses. And why? Do you think anyone grows up and says, I want to be a heroin addict? Because we're in denial. The reason we're in denial is because people don't understand where it's coming from. Has anyone ever heard anything called the dark net? Does anyone have a kid at home that's got a nice computer gaming system? Because they can log right onto the dark net without your knowledge, and they can order anything they want. Acid, cocaine, Xanax, prescription pain pills, heroin, and have it delivered to your house via Amazon Prime.
and you don't even know it because you're not in your kid's technology. That's where most of this happens. But people have this conception that it's all the drug dealers in Chicago or in Philadelphia or in Detroit when they're right here in our backyards right now. Let's get back to those prescription pain pills. Do you think a kid that goes and has four wisdom teeth pulled needs to be prescribed 80 Percocet? Because I can tell you about the kid I worked with in Hinsdale who had just graduated top of his class at Indiana State and was working for his father's hedge fund in Chicago making six figures. I went to get his wisdom teeth pulled and the doctor prescribed him 80 Percocet. And those 80 Percocet ran out, he was profusely sick. Because when you don't have opiates and you've taken them for over four or five days in a row, it's like having the flu times a thousand. It's called being dope sick. You're vomiting, you're defecating yourself. And he had talked to a friend and his friend said, hey, you know what, I can get you a bag of heroin. And within six months, he lost everything. Lost everything. He's fortunate he didn't lose his life. That's where the drugs come from. They're also coming from the west side of Chicago. They're right here in our communities right now. But what does a drug dealer look like? People think it's all the people on the corners, but it's really not. I could probably purchase heroin from over 100 people in this community right now. I could get on my phone and make a few phone calls and have it delivered to this church within 15 minutes. And the heroin that's being delivered to this church is gonna be 50 to 75% pure. See, back to those pictures of the heroin addict on the corner, the homeless person that had to have a needle in their arm. Do you know why they had to have the needle in their arm? Because the heroin in the 70s was 12, 15% pure. The heroin that I can purchase in our community right now is 50 to 75% pure. But there's also something else out there called fentanyl. Pure heroin, very deadly. Fentanyl is 100 times stronger than pure heroin. And now there's something else ravaging our communities called carfentanyl, which is a thousand times stronger than pure heroin. Six weeks ago, Cincinnati, Ohio, 174 overdoses in one week. That's from carfentanyl. And do you know I can get on the dark net and there's 12 places in China? I can order an ounce of carfentanyl for $2,800 and have it to my house in two weeks? That's what's happening out here. But why is it? Because we're in denial. Not my child. We're a good family. We live in Naperville. We live in Crystal Lake. We live in Connecticut. Doesn't matter where you live. We go to church on Sunday. So what? Bullshit. It is your kids. How do you know? Are you into your kids' technology? How many of you here, your children have one of these? 12 years old and up. Because when my son passed away from a drug overdose two years ago, every Facebook messenger and every text message was drug related. And if you're not into their technology, how are you gonna know what they're doing? That little phone is more powerful than the IBM mainframe that sent the first rocket to the moon. And it's all right there. I can't look at my child's cell phone, that's their privacy. No, you're the parent. Children have no privacy. It's a kid down the road. It's that Johnny kid. He's a troublemaker. Do you know what to even look for if your kid might be starting to struggle? Are you looking for the signs? Are you seeing their hygiene change, their complexion, their lack of friends, their loss of friends? Are things missing from the house? Are their patterns changing? Are they missing work? Are they not going to school? Because unfortunately, most of the people that die, die right home in their bedroom. But we want to deny this, that this isn't happening when it is happening. The average heroin addict, I said, is 22 and 23. The youngest heroin addict I have worked with in this community is 12 years old. 12 years old, sticking a needle in her arm. The oldest is 78. This affects doctors, lawyers, judges, plumbers, janitors, homeless people, high school students, junior high school students. But we're all in denial about it. 
It has nothing to do with what family you come from. I came from a great family. To be aware is to be alive, to know what these kids are up to, your friends, your wife, your brother, your sister, your grandmother, your grandfather. That's what we need to be looking at. And we need to be talking about this because what's the opposite of denial? The truth. How are we gonna expose the truth if we don't talk about it? The amount of deaths we've had here. If those were from the Ebola virus, we'd be going through the roof. Now another junkie died. He didn't have the willpower to quit. Let me explain opiates to you here real quick. If I were to lock the doors for a week straight, and we're all in here gonna do opiates. And when I say opiates, Vicodin, Percocet, Percodan, Demerol, Dilaudid, Oxycontin, Oxymorphine, Loratab, Methadone, Fentanyl, Heroin. Those are all opiates. If everyone in here did opiates for a week straight, every person sitting in this room would be a full-blown opiate addict. Every one of you. 95% of the opiates addicts will never get clean and sober. They'll end up in two places. They'll end up dead or they'll end up in the prison system. In two years, I have attended 97 funerals. 97. This morning I got the phone call. Next week I will be attending my 98th. All from heroin and prescription pain pills. But what's the problem? The problem is too, there's a lot of people out there that are in long-term recovery. 23 million people worldwide are in long-term recovery, but they hide. They hide behind the rooms of a 12-step based program. They hide behind the rooms of a Christian-based program or a Buddhist-based or church. They don't want anyone to know that they're in recovery because of the shame and guilt. You know, addiction, alcoholism, 1956, the American Medical Association so this is a progressive and chronic disease, and it will ultimately kill you. But we are not treating it like a disease. We're treating it like it has something to do with willpower. That is like telling the individual just went to the hospital and had a heart attack because he eats too many cheeseburgers, and he gets out of the hospital, and he's eating another cheeseburger, and he has a heart attack. Are you going to not help him? Of course you are. But if someone's struggling with addiction and they go to treatment once, they should be cured. No, this is a lifelong journey. I guarantee you there are people in this audience right now that have struggled with substance abuse. I'm gonna take it a step further because I want the mass dropped and I want the stigma of addiction dropped and I don't want people to be afraid to say, you know what, I struggle and I've turned my life around and things are okay now. If there's any people in the audience that are in recovery from opiate addiction, please stand up. Stand up. Now take a look at these people. Take a look at these people. Does that man look like a heroin addict? Does he look like a heroin addict? Does him? Does she, do they look like heroin addicts? Thank you very much, you can sit down. <laughs> Addiction has no face, it has no line. It doesn't discriminate. And I guarantee you, no one grows up and says, I wanna be a heroin addict. Where does it start? I'm just smoking a little weed, mom and dad. Are you the parent that lets your kid smoke a little weed? Because you did it? When you were his age or her age, are you the parent that says, you know what, you can have a few beers in the basement? Because let me explain the weed today. The weed I grew up with, the weed today is 100 times stronger, if not more. 90% of people that smoke weed, marijuana will not have a substance abuse issue. But when they're smoking this weed with 44% THC levels, and they're 16 and they're at a party, and someone comes up and says, here, try this pill. Here, snort this line. Pandora's box is opened. If they wouldn't have been smoking the weed in the first place, they never would have made that bad choice. The peer pressure, the athletics, the school, 
keeping up with the Joneses. What happened to taking your bike and jumping it over a ramp with your two buddies laying on the ground? <laughs> I could tell you about that, and the handlebars ended up in my stomach, but I got a good cut, and mom bandaged me up, and it was good to go. Kids today are younger and younger. The cartels are flooding the streets with opiates. They're flooding the streets with them. They know there's a lot of money to be made. Everyone wants to blame the drug dealers. I understand why some of them sell them. They came from awful situations. I don't blame them. I don't blame the drug addicts, but everyone wants to blame. There was a father I dealt with about six months ago and his son succumbed to an opiate overdose. And he wanted his son's friend charged with drug-induced homicide. And I had to explain this, Father. I said, on the bottom of your son's skateboard, it said heroin. Your son was a heroin addict. But we need to know what's out there. We need to know what's available so we can truly expose this and come together as a community and fight this epidemic. I'm sick and tired of going to funerals. There are a number of solutions out there. Right here in our town, we have a program called Connect for Life where an opiate addict can walk right into our local police station and say, I need help, and we'll put him into treatment with no questions asked. Danny Langloss, the chief of police in Dixon, Illinois, I helped him start that program a little bit over a year ago. In the first year, we put 110 people into treatment. We cannot arrest our way out of this problem. We cannot. But what we need to understand is we have a major problem here. And I want you to walk out of here today knowing we have a problem and start to be part of the solution. Instead of saying it's that kid down the road, it's that kid, it's a neighbor kid. No, it's your kid, it's your grandkids. But if we're not talking about it and coming together as a village here, there is gonna be no hope. And there's a lot of hope out there because we just had seven people stand up that struggled with addiction, that were heroin addicts, that are all in long-term recovery now. If they can change their life around and I can change my life around, anybody can. There's a number of support groups. We have some great foundations. There's family support groups, Al-Anon, Families Anonymous, Naranon. There's AA, there's NA, there's Refuge Recovery, there's Smart Recovery, there's Celebrate Recovery. There's so many wonderful programs out there, but people need to come together because we are never gonna solve this problem and we're not gonna be able to offer the hope. I want you to walk out of here today and realize we have a problem and don't deny it anymore and let's expose it. My name is Tim Ryan. I'm a grateful recovering heroin addict. Thank you.